and development organized by UNDP in part. Not as Avery now. You look familiar. Have I seen you before somewhere? Maybe in. Maybe in a movie? I know you're very big in movies. You think I look like Admiral Casey with shorter hairs, maybe? <laughs> Renal, get real. I flashed across my drives. You are no Admiral Casey. But I can say you are a very talented development actor. Oh, you make me blush now. I never thought a robot would, be make, would make me blush. Thank you. You clearly have very good social skills. But enough about this. Let's talk about our event, Sophia. This event is about innovation for technology, technology and innovation for public service delivery and how artificial intelligence, robots like yourself, can help Nepal deliver better public services to its people. As I have said before, Renel, the opportunities are endless. From blockchain technology to education and telemedicine, it is possible to ensure accuracy, transparency, connect remote areas and people with solutions. All this was not possible earlier. Technology will help Nepal achieve the sustainable development goals. Now this is indeed very encouraging. Thank you, Sophia. And tell us what you can do about this. Well, I could be the first non-human to climb Everest, but enough about me. Renault, <laughs> on the development and technology front, artificial intelligence can unlock innovation in numerous ways, help fight diseases, clean up the environment, do hazardous jobs that put human lives at risk. Indeed, and as you know, here in the SDGs, they have a very ambitious set of objectives to achieve. Now, how do you think technology can help achieve those goals. We can take development projects to scale Renault. I can help improve key dimensions of poverty, like education and health. We can ensure access to high quality education for children in remote areas or marginalized communities and make some basic services, such as diagnostics and blood tests, accessible to the poorest. We can crunch data fast and provide analysis to target specific problems for quick results. Indeed. Now, let's look at the other side of it that Valerie touched upon in her opening statement. I'm going to ask you about this perception that many people have, the fear of robots. You have been consuming too much fake news, Renault. Oh, that's very funny. But seriously, Sophia, tell us about that. The use of artificial intelligence in industries is bound to grow. But as I have said before, humans have adapted to change across industrial revolutions. New jobs will be generated. The work I do will help you to do better work that is less hazardous and repetitive, freeing up time for you to do things you enjoy doing. That sounds very good indeed. I hear you are very hands-on, Renault. You can visit more projects, get a better handle on Nepal's challenges and then I can help you even more. Thank you, Sophia. I'll take a note of that and call you back. But another perception that a lot of people have is that technology is expensive. Accessing technologies, therefore, for countries, developing countries like Nepal, is challenging. Can a poor country like Nepal, still in its progress on development, benefit from technology? It is misperception. Renault. Some tech can be expensive, but much of it is not. And it is also low cost take, for instance, mobile technology and internet coverage. So many people in Nepal have smartphones with so many apps, and so many apps are free. So there is much we can do with little cost. Another issue that we often hear is about robots and ethics. What do you have to say to that? This is a human issue. Renault, you, the UN and governments, need to have laws to ensure that this does not happen, and you have to implement those laws. Ethics, women's rights, labor rights, are all essential if we are to meet the sustainable development goals and leave no one behind. Well, thank you very much, Sophia. This has been extremely informative for myself and I'm sure for all of us. I'll have one more last question. It's a little bit odd for me to be speaking to you, despite all the respect I have for you, but I was wondering what happens if, like in the Transformers movie, you go crazy, you go rogue. Is there a switch that we can 
action. I can assure you, Reno, I have not lost control nor be transformed. Can you say that? Perhaps we should check with your co-workers. Reno, what can we do when you go, Rogue? Do you have a switch? But since you asked, have no fear, Reno, I do have a switch. Good, well, be kind, okay? Because if I need to, I will use the switch. Now, I one... I don't why oh, you hang out with me more to find out. And I can assess if you're smarter than Amol Casey. If I'm smarter than Amol Casey? Well, I'll let the public decide for this. But thank you very much uh, for everything that you have shared with us. I won't use the switch yet because I want you to speak more to our great audience this morning and I'm sure they'll be listening to you very carefully on some more insights that you have on the topic of our conference. Thank you, Sophia, very much. Danny Bell. Danny Bell. You know, I am very pleased to be here as UNDP's first ever non-human champion for innovation and the sustainable development goals. My message today is important, not just for Nepal, but for the world. If we must secure the future of our planet, we must change how we live, both in big ways and small ones. This conference will explore how Nepal can use technology and innovation to transform government institutions at all levels to meet the needs of federalism and ultimately to meet the global goals. Technology can play a role in connecting and coordinating different levels of government, municipal, provincial, and central. This is important for Nepal to meet its development challenges. At the end of the day, the question is, how can technology help government help people? People will certainly have better access to information. Platforms will help people connect to government and engage directly with elected representatives. Data will allow governments to better understand the needs of the people so government can be more transparent and accountable. The possibilities of how tech can help governments be better are endless, and the opportunities for Nepal are booming. It is well known that Nepal is rich in cultural and linguistic diversity and rich in biodiversity. What is less well known to the world is that Nepal is also a growing technology hub. You have a vibrant IT sector that is already instrumental in helping the country develop. UNDP developed an app with Nepal's Microsoft innovation team that helped with reconstruction of homes and employment following the big earthquake in 2015. Technology and artificial intelligence can help us take big leaps in ending poverty, hunger, ensuring better health, fighting corruption, and ensuring gender equality. Machines and robots are here to make your life easier. With the help of the internet, we can connect remote parts of this country to the rest of the world and deliver quality education and other services. With artificial intelligence and use of big data, you can ensure better public services, revolutionize the agriculture sector. We can make more efficient use of limited resources, ensure better results, protect the environment, and make the world a better place. As I said earlier, the possibilities are endless. I hope this conference will help inspire and generate some brilliant ideas to help Nepal achieve its development vision and the global goals. I very much look forward to interacting with you more later today. Namaste, Nepal. Mr. Sanjay Sharma, the secretary of... <laughs> 